This is Petite Syrah planted in April of 08. So uh, we ordered the grapes in 07 or as soon as we bought the place and we uh, planted them and they we picked about two and a quarter tons per acre last year, which is pretty miraculous for basically they're, they're 16 months old at that point, 17 months old. So we were real pleased with that. It was a challenging year. We had bees, we had wasps, we had hail on uh, September 6th. Uh, and we had to pick on September 9th, so we call this we call this vintage our 09, 09, 09 wine. So we picked on 09, 09, 09, and we had to because we had some hail damage to the bunches, and they would have rotted. So we had to get them out of the vineyard. We we picked at about 24 bricks, which was a little bit earlier than we wanted to, but uh, we'll see what you think of it when we when we taste it in a little bit. Uh, this field is is in its third growing season, and you can see now that the uh, the upper, the upper wires have now come into play. These are called our positioning wires. And you'll see the fruiting wire, and there's two sets of positioning wires. Now after the fruit is set, and the, the, the scary thing about grapes is, the first thing that comes out is the fruit bud. So if you have a frost, it gets the bud. Season over. So that, that's the, the real white knuckle time for us, is when, when we see bud break occurring about the third week in April, that by gosh we don't want any freezing weather uh, uh, this uh, for the rest of the summer or the rest of the spring and uh, this year we got a scare we had a uh, freeze on May 1st which I think was the third latest in the history of recorded weather in Cochise County and we were out here all night burning these guys along here we burnt some bonfires up here we had smudge pots and fortunately for some reason our property stayed a lot warmer than anybody else's don't know why, don't know if that's a trend. We were lucky, Rod, uh, Rod and Jan lost a lot of their buds. Uh, they, got down the, they got down in the 20s up there, 27, 28 degrees for a couple of hours. We never got below 30. And so we, uh, we dodged that bullet and so we've got a very nice fruit set. This is beautiful fruit. Uh, these plants are really happy. And then, so after the fruit is set, you'll see the little uh, the flower and uh, grapes are hermaphrodites. How many people know what that means? Oh yeah. They have sex with themselves. So, so they don't need to have anybody else pollinate them. They can pollinate themselves. So uh, the grapes flower and the grapes clusters begin to form very, very quickly. And then the foliage starts to really come on because the foliage is what pulls in the sunlight and uh, makes the grapes grow and makes them ripen. So once the fruit's set, we want that foliage to really, really go and, and produce a lot of photosynthesis for that plant. So what we do is, as the shoots start to come out, we'll train them up through those two sets of positioning wires so that they'll form a canopy over the grapes. That does two things. One, it creates a great photoelectric cell for the power of the sun to, to, to energize the grapes, but also shades them so that we can have warm sunny days like this and the grapes are not exposed to full sunlight all day long. And so the, the canopy is very, very important. As these plants mature, the canopies will get much more large. Uh, right now, they're just barely enough. Uh, but once, once these young vines, who are not mature yet, uh, they put out their fruit, and they think they're all done. They're real happy with themselves. They're like teenagers. And so once, once they put their fruit on, they tend not to add a whole lot of canopy. So we're pushing them to get canopy by June 1st. Uh, and if we don't have good canopy by June 1st, we're, we're in a bit of a trouble. Now, we haven't had any problems here having our fruit get ripened. In California, some places they have a very hard time getting their fruit to get ripe before the rains start in late October. And this year they were really late, uh, and a lot of people went out and, and did what's called canopy management, where they actually went in and cut their leaves off so to expose the grapes to th as much sun as possible to get them ripe. As soon as they did that, last week it was 105. So uh, uh, we're hoping that we don't have to do a lot of canopy management. Uh, it's a dangerous art, as, as they found out. Uh, but you never know. That, once again, that's farming. And uh, they, felt, they did what they felt they had to do. And because of that, they're going to have a lot of sunburned fruit. Uh, they're going to have some problems with that fruit. And it, go along and tie little bunches, a little bow above them. And, <laughs> and we need a little untie them and let them go bunch of little umbrellas or something. I don't know what they're going to do, but, but that, the decisions that you make every day in the vineyard are going to impact what happens in that building, whether it's six months from now or six years from now. Uh, everything you do out here impacts it. 
Uh, the Petit Syrah grape is a small berry. You'll see it's much smaller and compact than the Syrah and Grenache you were looking at, hence the name Petit. Uh, at, but, and, it, and it's a, uh, a varietal that has a uh, very, very uh, dark color, which you'll see. Uh, there's a lot of skin to pulp and juice ratio. And so that really adds to the color. If you, if you weigh the grape, if you took it apart, you'd find that the skin weighs a lot more in ratio to the rest of the grape than the grapes you'll see down here. And so it produces a very full-bodied wine, uh, a tannic wine, and I'll, I'll explain that to you when we taste it. And it's, it's never been grown around this, in this whole area, so it's kind of an experimental one. Uh, we've selected it, one, because we could get our hands on it quick. Somebody defaulted on their contract, so we didn't have to wait a year and a half to get it. But two, uh, we think there's going to be some interesting things that we can do with it here. So that, that's why it was, it was your first planting? Yeah, these are, this two acres here was our first year. Right, we grabbed it because we wanted to get something in the ground. And, uh, and we really, really are happy with it so far. It's, it's very vigorous. Uh, the fruit's delightful. And uh, we think the, the way the wines are developing, they're going to be very, very good. But we won't really know what any of this is going to do till about probably six or seven years when the roots really get down into the, into the, ter the, the, the soil portion of the terroir uh, and find out what that, what, what's going to happen to that. We think it's going to be exciting to watch them mature and see how they change over the next few years. A grape plant can live 100 years. Uh, typically, uh, they, will, they will reach their maximum capacity in years 15 through 30. Uh, hopefully, we'll never have to replant these grapes. Uh, well, hopefully, we'll live another 75 years. We'll have to redo it. But, but uh, you never know how long they're going to last because, we, we, once again, I've never had grapes here before. So we don't know how long they're going to produce, uh, how long they're going to be healthy. And at some point, when they stop producing, you have to replace them and start over again. So, any questions on the uh, Petit Syrah? Hopefully next year when you come back, the whole vineyard will look like this. Uh, it'll be exciting. Yeah? How many glasses or how many bottles of wine would you normally get out of an acre? Okay. Well, uh, how many bottles of wine would you get out of an acre? It all depends on what the yield is for that year. As I mentioned before, you, you measure your yield in tonnage. But the general rule of thumb is, for every thousand pounds of grapes, you make a barrel of wine. For a ton, you make two barrels. Two barrels of wine make 50 cases. There's about 60, bar 60 gallons in a barrel of wine. So uh, the yield factor is you, you pick a ton and you get 1,000 pounds of juice. Is about what it is. About 50% you get out of there. So you can see that the impact of the yield has on the amount of wine you make. If you have a good year and you pick three or four tons an acre, uh, you can make quite a bit of wine. If you have hail, if you have frost in the spring that, that damages buds, and you get a ton an acre, cuts into the inco income flow, big time. But uh, each year you've got to adjust to what the, what the Mother Nature gives you, and you live with what you got. What yeah. does Mother Nature give you here that might be different than the uh, uh, Elgin Sonoida area? Um, Sonoida, Elgin, yeah, they, were hit by a they, they got hit by hail. We got it last year, not nearly the scale that they got. Uh, hail is hit and miss. I mean, it can, it, 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 it can. We, we had hail here on September 6th last year, and I don't think we had it across the street. Uh, so it, it was just local, and it was bad luck. Uh, the ground, how does that differ? The ground's quite different. The soil here is much more acidic, uh, which, which can be problematic, but it's also good because the, the acidity in the soil reflects a lot with the pH of the wine is. And pH of the wine, along with the acidity of it, give it characteristics that you like. You want it to be fruity, you want it to be smooth, but you also want it to have a little bit of acidity so it cleanses your palate. If a wine doesn't have any acidity in it, it's, it tastes flat, mm -hmm. and it tastes the same every sip. It doesn't have any, uh, any uh, interesting characteristics to it. So our pH here is pretty low, our soil. In fact, this, when we had the soils tested before we bought the place, the, 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 the uh, report came back, unusually low pH for Arizona. And we went, good thing. It's gonna, it, it cuts down a little bit on your yield, but it also, I think, makes a lot better grapes. So the soil here is very different than anywhere in the state. And we think it's going to be better than anywhere in the state. And then the, the difference, uh, another difference with the Elgin Sonoid area, they planted over previously agriculturally planted areas. A lot of those areas were cotton farms. They've got nematodes down there. 
or this is totally virgin ground. This is this was uh, covered with mesquites, which if anybody knows what mesquite is, it's a legume. And what is the most number one nitrogen introducing plant in the world? A legume. So this soil is full of mesquite nitrogen, and that's why these grapes, I think, are taking off the way they are. So that's very different. And this is all my personal philosophy. So far, I'm right. We'll see. We'll see if I am long term. And then the mountain. That's the big difference. They they don't have the uh, the mountain influence that we have here, and they're about 3,500 feet elevation as opposed to 40, 40 4,900. We're right here. Where do we purchase our plants and how do we make that decision? Uh, there's about eight or nine suppliers in uh, California. All of it comes from California. Uh, we get, we get our, a lot of our, uh, our varietal uh, grafts from France. They're called Antov clones. There's also some clones that are developed out of California. We have some of, all, some of both. And uh, we select it based on how well the plants came out the next the first year. Uh, like the Viognier you were in, the first thing, we got about a 99.4% take on that. That means that of all the, of, of the 2,000 little stalks we put in the ground, I think we had four of them that didn't come out. We go back to those folks. Uh, as opposed to some of the stuff that we bought here, I won't name any names, but we, we're not pleased with some of the take we got of the Grenache uh, in, in spring of 09, and we will not be going back to them unless we're desperate. Also, a lot of it has to do with availability. Uh, not everybody gets their hands on what we want. And so they don't all grow the same thing. They don't all have the same clones. They don't all have the rootstock that we prefer uh, because they have to grow things years in advance to anticipate the market because it takes a while to develop the roots. They might not have the rootstock that you want. And the last thing you want to do is, is compromise on rootstock because if the rootstock isn't heat resistant, and, uh, and, and, re and um, pH resistant, like our soils here, we could grow a lot, of, a lot of plants that would not be very successful. Any other questions? Yeah. How did you gain all this tremendous knowledge? How did I get this tremendous knowledge? Um, most of it last night reading. No, I, no, no. Uh, Peggy and I have been, I've, I've been drinking fine wines for most of my adult life, and Peggy and I have been collecting wines for, uh, about 15 years now, and most of our vacations ended up becoming wine buying trips. Uh, we put a cellar in our home, and, and of course we had to populate that. And, and the way we enjoyed doing that was to not just go to Napa Valley and go through the tasting room and talk to people. We actually made appointments with winemakers. And you, you, do, you get those appointments by buying a lot of wine because they usually don't want to spend that much time with you. But I would, I would go and visit with the winemakers and the people that worked in the field and talked to them about wine and never anticipating that this would ever happen. It was just a labor of love. We wanted to learn about how the wines were made. Uh, and and uh, so just picked up a lot of knowledge along the way. I've learned so much just being out in the monks of these guys. Uh, they say the best fertilizer in the world is your farmer's boots and the footpr or footprints of his boots in the field. And, and so we spent a lot of time out here as much as we can just watching these plants, learning about them watching the weather. We have a weather station that we document our weather to see what, what certain types of events occurred and how they impacted the vines, how they impact the grapes on the vines. And it's just a, a learning process and we're hoping you all learn along with us because we certainly don't have the answers for this place. Got a lot more questions than answers, but I just picked up a lot of knowledge along the way just because it was a passion. All right, we better get up there and eat or Peggy's going to have all our hides. So let's head on up, grab another cool water. We're going to do some wine tasting, and then we'll have some lunch. You're wonderful. And I'll, <laughs> and I'll be available to answer any questions. We'll be able to look in the barrel room, and I can tell you about that, too. Stay as long as you like. You guys are inspiring. It's just... Thank you. Very interesting.